Hello everyone, my name is Nathan, and welcome to a video that is not about Star Wars on May 4th. Today is Audrey Hepburn's birthday, and I wanted to celebrate by releasing a video about my 10 favorite movies from her. Fun little fact, when this video releases, I will actually be graduating from grad school. I'll literally be in the graduation ceremony, getting ready to walk and everything. So enjoy while you watch. When it comes to choosing a favorite actor and a favorite actress, I have a really hard time choosing a favorite actress. There are so many good ones, but if I were to choose only one, I think I would have to go with Audrey. Audrey Hepburn. She is just so elegant, so charming, and she's a really good actress too. She doesn't have that big of a filmography, but in the few movies that she was in, she received five Oscar nominations, winning her very first nomination she received for Roman Holiday. And it just proves how great she is. The fact that her filmography isn't that large, but yet she got nominated so many times. She has such a unique look about her. It's like stunningly mysterious. Anytime I'm watching a movie with her, no matter the quality of the movie, I can at least take out of it that I love Audrey Hepburn. In it. I've seen 13 movies total from her, but let's get started on my top 10. Audrey Hepburn had such a diverse filmography. Whether it was playing in a comedy, a heist film, or a drama, she was so good at playing whatever assignment she was given. My number 10 spot finds her in a drama role. It is The Nun's Story. This movie is directed by Fred Zinnemann, and it holds a very long runtime. However, I don't really think that that's a con to the movie. The movie is all about Audrey Hepburn's character converting to being a nun and living the strict lifestyle that comes with that. And so to take anything out would be cheating the audience of life events that happen that led her to the ending that we get in the movie. It is very long, but when I watched it, I was just starting grad school, so I actually did have to watch it in several sittings, and so I didn't feel the runtime as much as I would have had I watched it in one sitting. I really like the experiences that we see in the movie, but I also like the end results. I think that everything comes together really well, and of course, Audrey Hepburn is incredible. You're gonna hear that a lot in this video, so just get used to me complimenting her. Coming in at number nine, we have one of two Audrey Hepburn and Billy Wilder collaborations. It is Sabrina. Sabrina is the ultimate love triangle movie. It it was a love triangle before love triangles were a thing. Don't quote me on that. But it's Audrey Hepburn, William Holden, and Humphrey Bogart. Which man is she going to choose? And it's written and directed by Billy Wilder. And so as you can imagine, Sabrina has a very witty, clever, smart script. I'm not as big of a fan of Humphrey Bogart as other people are. However, I think I, I might have liked him more in this movie because he doesn't really play a Bogart part, it seems. William Holden is enjoyable, even though he is punchable in some scenes. But really, Audrey Hepburn, again, just steals the show. It's a movie I've only seen once, but I definitely want to check it out again someday. At number eight, we have Breakfast at Tiffany's. This is arguably Audrey Hepburn's most iconic role. I think it's interesting how iconic this movie really is too. I've met several people in my life who they call this their favorite movie of all time, and I think it's just good. I've seen the movie twice. I also read the book in preparation for my rewatch, so I know the story very well. I know Holly Golightly. I know her mannerisms, her characteristics. I get what the movie's going for. I even had the hot take that I might like the movie more than the book. Just some decisions they make in the movie opposed to the book. Like the book has more of a sad ending, I'd say, and this movie definitely has more of a happy ending. So pick your poison, whatever you want. But I think my biggest problems with Breakfast at Tiffany's, obviously the racial stereotype they have Mickey Rooney cast it as. Get rid of that. That's super messed up. I don't like it. And it takes me out of the viewing too. Like I can't like this movie more because of how painfully awful that casting is. But I think universally everyone could agree that that's a problem with this movie and so looking beyond that I don't love the main character. George Peppard is the one who plays Paul and you know I don't think he's necessarily a bad actor like he's no Edward Cummings to me. Maybe it's the chemistry between him and Audrey Hepburn that I can't buy. There's just something off about the whole movie. I've seen Audrey Hepburn in plenty of romantic films and for some reason Breakfast at Tiffany's it just doesn't do it for me. I think I would have liked the movie a lot more if someone like Harry Grant, Gregory Peck, someone that we know that Audrey Hepburn has good chemistry with was playing the role of Paul. And although I do have some cons with the movie, it is ranked at number eight. Like I still find it to be a good movie at best. The good things about this movie, we got Moon River, which is such an iconic song. And I'll go as far to say that the scene with Audrey Hepburn singing Moon River at her window is not only the best scene of the movie, but one of the best scenes of Audrey Hepburn's entire career. That to me is not only movie magic, but Audrey Hepburn magic. 
perfect. That's the scene for me where I am just in awe. Not only with how beautiful she was, but also just how good she was at putting the viewer in a trance. She's just so stunning and her voice is beautiful too. Breakfast at Tiffany's, it's not an awful movie. There are just some minor problems and major problems that I would change to make it an even better movie. How to Steal a Million is a really fun heist movie from the 60s. It's definitely not as flashy as a heist film you would see today. In fact, the movie takes about an hour to even get to the heist scene itself. But the moments that lead up to it and the heist itself are so fun to see. There are serious stakes, but at the same time, the movie takes the more humorous route. And so you're able to laugh instead of be worried about what's going to happen to these characters. Peter O'Toole and Audrey Hepburn have great chemistry in this movie. It does take a while to get to the heist, but that's really my only complaint with How to Steal a Million. I was mostly just impressed with how engaged I was in this movie and how I really appreciated it, even though it was more of a comedic heist movie instead of a serious heist movie like I'm used to. Two for the Road is a movie I wanted to watch in preparation for this video because I had a feeling that it would make the list and sure enough, here it is just outside the top five. It's kind of a conflicting watch because it's very delightful, but at the same time, it's very sombering as well. Two for the Road also joins the club of unfalling in love movies. The other members of the club include 500 Days of Summer, Blue Valentine, and A Marriage Story. The editing is definitely the standout for me in the movie. It is so creative with how they piece together the story of these two lovers. One moment you're watching a scene where they're years into their marriage, they have a kid, and before you know it, you're watching the scene where they first meet. Then they cut a few years into the future where they've met, but they're dating and they're getting to know each other still. And then before you know it, you're back to when they're several years into their marriage. And that's the whole movie. It is genius editing. And I really like that this movie was filmed the way it was. I think if they gave us a movie that was in chronological order, it would not be as memorable as it was. It works so much better because everything happens out of order. I think it also allows more room for feelings because one moment you're watching them fall in love and they're so happy together and the very next scene they basically hate each other and so that's a big pro to this movie. Audrey Hepburn is the other standout. While I think Albert Finney did a really good job in the movie I do think his character is kind of a tool but other than that it was a great time and I'm just really glad I watched it before this video. We're now at my top five coming in at number five it is My Fair Lady. This movie got a ton of Oscar nominations it won best picture and there's a lot to love about it and when I say a lot I mean Audrey Hepburn and some songs. I don't know if this is a hot take or the majority would agree, but I don't like Rex Harrison's character in this movie at all. I think it's very dated and he comes off as very chauvinistic. So that's like a con to me, it really bothers me about My Fair Lady. So I'm currently editing the video right now and I totally forgot to mention another problem I have with it and that would be the dubbing. Marnie Nixon has an amazing voice, don't get me wrong, but I've heard Audrey Hepburn sing. In fact, I even talked about it during Breakfast at Tiffany's and they could have easily left her singing voice in this movie. If you look it up on YouTube, there are video clips of her actual singing in the movie and it is so well done so it really annoys me that they dubbed over her voice because it could have been even better and more authentic if they had used just her normal singing voice instead of having someone dub over her someone said resting on my knee woman tender as he can be but the pros outweigh the cons. I just love Audrey Hepburn's character, Eliza. She is so funny and she really nails down the part of coming from poverty to riches. Wouldn't it be loverly is an earworm, except I enjoy it being stuck in my head. Like whenever it gets stuck in there, I just keep singing it or humming it or whistling it, whatever it is. It's such a catchy song. I really like it. I Could Have Danced All Night is also a great song. It's kind of a funny tidbit that comes from this movie, the song Poor Professor Higgins. My family and I, we think it's a very corny song. We we actually use it against each other whenever we're having our first world problems. Like if your phone is at a low percentage or you forgot to buy that item on your grocery list, we'll usually respond with poor Professor Higgins. But yeah, My Fair Lady is iconic, but Audrey Hepburn is the reason I love this movie and why it ranks in the top five. The Children's Hour is home to possibly the most annoying, irritating child character I've ever seen put to film. The actress does an amazing job. It's nothing with the performance. The character is just so infuriating. She belongs in the same club as that little girl from The Hunt, that Mads Mikkelsen movie. Oh, you just want to... The movie stars Audrey Hepburn and Shirley MacLaine. They both are headmistresses of this private school for girls. And long story short, a rumor started that they are in a lesbian relationship. The movie came out in 1961, so it already feels way ahead of its time with that plot alone. But the consequences that happen because of this rumor that has spread, I'll just let you watch the movie knowing the plot and knowing the performers that are in it. But just know it's a very good movie with great performances. And it's directed by William Wyler, who is a favorite of mine on 
this channel. When it comes to my top three, I shuffle them several times before deciding on my number one. Any of these movies I think could be my number one, depending on the day and depending on my mood. But as of today, my number three goes to Wait Until Dark. This is an excellent thriller from the 60s. You have Audrey Hepburn playing a recently blind woman, and she's terrorized by these people who they are in search of a doll that has heroin inside of it. And Audrey Hepburn didn't purposely come into possession of this doll, but by chance of fate, she has it in her possession. And so it's basically Home Alone with Audrey Hepburn, but the burglars are actually after something specific and the main character is blind. It's a lot more thrilling too. Like it's definitely not a comedy. Wait Until Dark works for so many reasons. The score is incredible. Audrey Hepburn's performance is incredible. She was, of course, nominated for the Oscar for this, as she should have been. But also, this movie houses one of the greatest jump scares I've ever seen put to film. The first time I was watching it, I flew out of my chair. If you haven't watched it and you're looking for a good thriller and you're a fan of Audrey Hepburn, why haven't you watched it? Like, watch it now. Actually, finish my video first, then watch it. Coming in at number two is Charade. Audrey Hepburn, Cary Grant, feels like Alfred Hitchcock, Yes, freaking please. The great thing about Charade, besides the two lead actors, is just how clever and witty and full of twists it is. I've seen it two times, and the gap between seeing it and seeing it a second time, I had completely forgotten about most of the movie. I remembered one scene in the end because Cary Grant makes a very funny face, but I didn't remember like how we got to that ending scene. All right, be real is happening, so smile. Even on a second watch, I was constantly guessing what was going to happen next. I don't know if that's a pro to the movie or a con to the movie because I forgot how the movie went, but either way, it made for an enjoyable experience on the second watch. It's also very funny, and as you're watching it, especially the first time you see it, you don't really know what direction it's going in, because right when you believe one story, some new evidence pops up, and so you don't know what to believe. The movie title, Charade, is very fitting. Ugh, just talking about it right now, I'm like, is it my number one or is my number one my number one? It's so hard, but just know I love this movie and my number one very much. Speaking of number one, let's quit beating around the bush. It is Roman Holiday. On the surface, there's an argument for why I like Charade more than Roman Holiday. But when I was looking at my list and comparing the movies and moving movies from one spot to the next, I couldn't not put Roman Holiday at number one. I recently rewatched it and this rewatch did wonders for me. It went from a great movie to a nearly perfect movie. And I wouldn't be surprised if when I watch it again, it becomes that perfect 10 out of 10 for me. Roman Holiday is just so sweet. It's a movie where two characters played by Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck find themselves caught in a lie, but it's almost justifiable because they're both lying. So it's really adorable watching them both live through this lie, but also fall in love during the process. When I think of Roman Holiday, yes, I think of those scenes of them touring Rome and obviously them falling in love and the different shenanigans they find themselves in. Love the scene where they put their hand in that one statue's mouth, but the moments that stand out to me the most are the most dramatic scenes of the movie. Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck in the car. The final scene. Really, any moment with Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck just staring at each other. It's such a great romantic film, and it gives you an ending that you're not quite expecting, especially for the time it was made. So I am going to go into spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen Roman Holiday, just skip this part. But I do want to say, when I was first watching this movie, I was watching it with friends, and I remember one of my friends, she's watching it, and she's like, oh, it's not going to end this way. It's an old movie, so of course they're going to have a happy ending. And she kept waiting for Audrey Hepburn to come back out as Gregory Peck is leaving. And Audrey Hepburn never comes back out, as you know. And she was shocked. She actually started crying because the movie impacted her that much. And I think it's such a bold move of the movie, and it makes me like the movie even more. It ends on that very bittersweet ending, and that's to me what makes it so special. Today, Roman Holiday is my favorite Audrey Hepburn movie. I would love to hear what your favorites are in the comments below. As always, thanks all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.